don't leave here defeated. Don't get off and walk your bike to the top of the hill. You know how to get there. You've trained for this. This is what God wants you to do. You know, I woke up this morning, I was thinking to myself as I woke up, I woke up this morning, I thought two things the moment I woke up. I thought, man, what a great day to serve God. And I thought, what a great day to go for a bike ride after serving God. So my plans this afternoon is to go on my bike somewhere. We're going to take a moment and we're going to talk about trees today. This is my, uh, my version of a tree. It's a little bit smaller than most and uh, is not alive by no means. But... Um, I love trees. I mean, I really do. In fact, I have a shirt that says, and watch this, watch it. I'm serious. Kitchen up. I love trees. See, I have a shirt that says, I love trees. I love trees. I don't know anything about trees. Like, I have no clue. How, like, I don't, I don't know their names. I don't know what they're called. I don't really know how they work. When I started thinking about talking about trees, I started to learn about it. So I was like reading through all the scientific stuff and it like quickly surpassed my knowledge. And, like, and I was like, you know what, we're going to have to reroute this whole sermon because this is going to be a disaster. Because my luck, the day I choose to talk about trees, they're going to be like this professional tree guy in here. And he's going to be, and everything I say is going to be wrong. So we're going to the basics today. We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the branch. We're going to talk about the trunk. We're going to talk about the roots. And that's where we're going to go. And I'm pretty sure I know those three parts. So we should be good right there. As I was driving this week, I was headed down the hill. I go to Chico a lot, and I just end up driving a lot for work. And as I'm driving, I realize that I'm, I'm looking at these trees. But every time I look at a tree, like it finally starts to catch my eyes, and I'm like going over my lesson and stuff like that. And I noticed that I only ever looked at like the canopy enough. Like I would look at the trunk eventually, but my first glance was always to the branches and the leaves and the fruits and whatever's on them. And that's where my eyes went first. And it wasn't until I'd actually seen the tree that I started to look at the trunk and everything else. But my eyes were always on the upper part. And, and you know, and as I'm looking and I'm driving down, you see these healthy trees, but you see these trees that maybe been, you know, struck by lightning or been in a fire or just over time has died. And what you start to notice is you have dead branches on these trees. And in the dead branches, they produce nothing, right? I mean, a dead branch does no one any good unless you're trying to start a fire. It doesn't really work out. It doesn't produce anything. So in a tree, let's, let's imagine you're a tree. And let's imagine in your life, you have branches. Because everything that's produced out of you is a branch. So you are, the, you are the trunk and you are the root. But everything that comes out of you is a branch. And there are two types of branches. There is the healthy branch that has leaves, it has fruits, it has nuts, it has flowers. Whatever's on your tree, that's what's on it. There's the he healthy branch. But then there's the unhealthy branch. And there's the dead branch that like penetrates out. And because there's nothing on it, it stands out. All the other trees have branches, but this one's bare. And this bare branch sticks out. It's the first thing we see because it stands out from the rest of them. And we don't realize it until, and you're like, oh, there's that dead branch. And in our life, we end up with these dead branches. And in our life, they tend to become our focal point of our life. And we get so focused on this dead branch that we forget about everything else. We're going to talk about this. But before we get into this, you guys can join me on this journey. But you got to be honest with yourself. If you were in my youth group right now, I'd be asking you, what dead branch are you carrying? But I'm not going to because I don't want to embarrass you guys. But in your mind, you have to be honest with yourself. Let's open in prayer really quick. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this journey you're going to take us on. Lord, we thank you that we might come in defeated. We might come in down. We might come in a little beat up. But we will leave here with hope. Because in our message lies hope. In your word lies hope. So Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we ask that you just open the hearts of the people. Allow your word to be revealed to them. In your name, amen. Branches. 
It's like the part of the tree that it kind of defines what the tree is, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, we, from looking at a branch, we know how healthy the tree is, right? And so let's say we have this dead branch in our life. And let's say there's a dead branch on a tree. If you were an arborist and you got called out to look at a tree and it had a dead branch, you would look at that dead branch, but you wouldn't try to fix it at that dead branch, right? I mean, you'd go back somewhere else to find the problem because the problem isn't in the dead branch. It's somewhere beyond it. It's maybe in the trunk. It's maybe in the roots. Maybe it's in the soil. Maybe it's what's being put into the roots, but it's somewhere else besides in that dead branch. The branch is simply the outcome of what's been going through the tree for all this time. And, and, and that's what it produces. It's the product of what is in our roots. But until, so if you say, hey, I have a dead branch and I, all my focus is on it, maybe it's time we get away from focusing on the branch and we get to focusing on our roots because in the reality, that's how we heal the dead branch. When I was uh, about 10 years ago, I really took up cycling. Like I was going to become like this in my mind, I was becoming like a professional cyclist. I was like, well, maybe I'll go like do the Tour de France or something, which is never going to happen. But in my mind, that was what I was thinking. So I'd been training to go on this bike ride with my brothers. Both my brothers are avid cyclists. My, my older brother is, is unbelievable. So I've been training, and we've been doing all these dirt trails, and we're going to go up to Tahoe and ride. So I did all the dirt trails around here, and I'd been really working on everything that goes involved with cycling. I worked on all my fundamentals, worked on my cadence, worked on where my feet were positioned at, worked on where my knees were, how I sat on the saddle, everything that goes on, right? How you, everything I worked on. It. So we get on this bike ride, and it was a Saturday. We go out Friday night. We do this little bike ride, and it went pretty well. We wake up on Saturday. We go out, and we go up this hill, and, and I'm riding, and I start in the back because I assume that's where I'm going to end up anyways. So instead of getting passed by everybody, let's just start there, and maybe I'll pass someone else. So I just go ahead and start in the back. So we start climbing, and this hill is a killer. And I'm going, and I'm going, and it's these switchbacks, so it just goes like this, right, all the way up. And it just never seems to end. My older brother, he waits like halfway up from me. He's like, Jake, you're almost there, dude. Just keep going. And then he like blows on up the trail. And so I, I finally get to the top, and Zach's like, you made it, dude. I'm like, oh, dude, that was unbelievable. But at least I'm at the top. And Zach tells me, well, you're good, man. That's the last hill of the day. I'm like, dude, life is sweet. So we start headed down this hill, and we're, and we're hauling down this hill. But, but you know in the back of your mind, I mean, it was a fool to believe him, but because you know there's another hill. So I'm flying down this hill, and I get about halfway down this hill, and we start, we hang this right, and right as we hang it right, we go back up, and there's a hill, man. And it's not just a hill. I mean, it's so steep. It's basically vertical. I mean, I'm going to need like a rope to get me up this thing. So I, get, so I start pedaling. But I was so discouraged because I thought I'd already reached the top. I lost focus of everything that I was supposed to do. I forgot how to pedal. I'm on clips in my feet. I'm like, I'm panicking. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I mean, I am so exhausted. I finally just unclip and get off my bike. And I walk my bike up the hill. And I was so defeated. I was so defeated when I got to the top of the hill. And I realized you never ride the hill, right? You always just stick to your position. Don't worry about what's in front of you. Because if you know how to ride, you can always get there. You just have to keep pedaling. So you stand up and you pedal a little bit. So maybe you have to go a little bit slow, but you just keep pedaling. You never worry about the hill. And in our life, that's what we get. We get these branches that are dead and we get out there and we say, and all of our focus is on this branch and everything that is getting us down, is like, it's right there. And it's like, oh my gosh, how do I get over it? Because all I see is my problems. All I see is how depressed I am. All I see is how discouraged I am. All I see is how I'm just, I'm ready. If I leave now, no one's going to care. My job sucks. My, my marriage sucks. We fought all the way to church this morning. Everything is falling apart in my life. This is overwhelming me. I'm telling you, if you live like that, it'll defeat you every time. You need to back up. You need to say, hey, that is that. Okay, it's not going to change overnight. But I'm going to start putting my focus on God. I'm going to start putting my focus where it's required to be. Not on the branch, but right here on God. If you have your Bibles, flip over to Psalms really quick. We're going to look at the very first chapter. And we're going to read something. It's, it's in the first chapters, verses 1 through 3. It should be, it's right there if you want to, if you don't have a Bible with you. It says this. Okay, listen to all the verses. They all are outstanding. 
It says, blessed is the man who walks not, that not's very important, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but, this is a good part, delights in the law of the Lord. So what does he do? He delights in the word of God. And what does he do with the word of God? It says, and on his law, he meditates day and night. He doesn't meditate when his life's falling apart. He meditates all the time. See, you ever been in a situation to where you're already behind? And then when you're already behind, you try to get caught up? It doesn't work. You have to be in front of it. You have to be in front of what's going bad so you know how to deal with it. That's why it says he meditates day and night. Not when your life is falling apart, but when you wake up in the morning and things are going good, you praise God. When you're sitting at work and everything's going pretty decent, you praise God. Every moment you praise God. So that way when a dead branch shoots out, you know how to handle it. You don't have to be defeated. That hill that seemed to never end, always ends. Every single hill, every single obstacle has a top point. Everything eventually comes back down. Everest is like 29,000 feet, but it does top out. And when you get there and you turn around, it's all downhill. You just have to know to get there. Let's see what it keeps saying. It says this. In verse 3, he says, He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields fruit in its season and his leaves do not wither and all that he does, he prospers. If we stay in God, it says right here in the Bible, if we stay in his word, we will prosper. It's not we might. It's not only if God thinks he likes you, but it's we will prosper because we choose to be in his word. Your branches, you say today, hey, hey, Jake, but you don't know my life. You don't know the things I've been through. You don't know how hard it's been. You're right, I don't. I've been through some tough stuff, but maybe not as tough as you. I've been through some bad stuff, but maybe not as bad as you. But I do know one thing, that when my, when my branches started to die, I found God. And I just didn't find him once a day. I found my verse that I stand on. It's my verse. It's one that means everything in the world to me. It's something that I stand on all the time. Every day of my life, I quote it to myself so that I know what I'm supposed to do. And I've taken my eyes away from the branches and I've taken it to the trunk and to the roots, right? Because that's how a tree works, right? It's not that the branch does everything. You could have this dead branch, but you have to protect your roots. And that's what we're worried about today. We're not worried about the branch. We're not worried about the outcome. Let God handle the outcome. Let God take care of the situation. It says, cast your cares upon him, right? That's what it says. Don't worry about the outcome. You worry about what you put into your life. If you're going to put in bad things into your life, don't be surprised when a branch dies. But if you're going to fill your life with the Word of God, then also don't be surprised when your leaves turn green. Welcome them. And that's what we have to learn to do. That's where we need to learn to be as people, is to get our mind off of where our problems are, and we have to learn to stand on them. We're going we're gonna to watch a video here really quick of a guy that I know from Colorado. It's a powerful testimony. I want you to watch the whole thing. I want you to watch it because you say you stand here today and if I gave, any, if I gave people a piece of paper and I said write down your problem, I guarantee you 99% of these people in this room could write down a problem right now, right? And we could say this problem is overwhelming me today. This problem is defeating me today. I came in here and this problem is keeping me awake at night. It's affecting my relationships. It's affecting situations in my life. It's basically running my life. This problem is, and I don't know how to get past it. And you can walk that way your whole entire life. And you can say, hey, this problem is going to define me. This problem is going to destroy me. And eventually it will, if you let it. 
But God says, you don't have to let that problem destroy you. You don't have to let that problem take you. You don't have to let that define who you are. When we, we're going to watch this, and when we come back, we're going to talk about how great God is and the hope that he has. And this video is from a gentleman that I know in Colorado, and he allowed the situations to overcome him. But watch the video, because in the end of the video, there's hope to who he was. My name is Owen Davis. This is my story. You know, my life has always been rough as a lot of people's is. And finding your direction and your purpose is challenging. In my past, I made a lot of mistakes. April 6, 2008, I have a suicide attempt. Attempted to take my own life, to give up, to run away, to no longer face the issues of life, the stress, the depression. During this moment, as my body changed temperature, raging from hot to freezing cold. I was touched by who I know was undoubtedly the Lord as he touched me and he told me, it's okay. This is prior to me awakening in the hospital to breathing out of the tube in my neck. He, he touched me. Uh, the healing process was quite, was, was quite dramatic, it was very tough for, I had to relearn how to walk, I had to regain all feelings, which a lot of us still don't have. Once I was healed and I was on my feet, you know, I, 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 t I took that, that opportunity to reach, reach out, reach out to the Lord and asking for forgiveness. We were invited by my sister-in-law and her husband to attend a Sunday service at the River Life in Wellington. The Lord must have known I was going to church that day. Uh, uh, the pa pastor, Pastor Rick spoke and through him I felt the Lord talking to me directly. about overcoming obstacles you faced. And the Lord was talking to me and the Lord was telling me to share my story. He was telling me to open up and hold my head high. Today I have the Lord of my life more than, more than ever that the Lord is not done with me yet. I came up with this uh, setting goals as G O A L, God over all limits. Yeah, He has shown me the way and my purpose of who I am. And these scars are my everyday reminder not to give up, not to quit, to walk in the light to walk in his ways. But once we open our hearts up and we let him in, we can accomplish anything. It is okay to be where it is, okay to be weak. For with him, we can overcome anything. Stay faithful, stay strong. And just how, you know, we may bear scars today, of our actions, but those scars have a story, and it's needed to be heard. Six months ago in Colorado, and his testimony is so powerful, because here is a guy that didn't protect what was important, 
because he didn't protect it, it almost defeated him. But you know the greatest part about the testimony? Is I love when he says, I asked God for forgiveness, and I ran after him. Right? Because he, he understood what mattered. He got defeated like every single one of us do. His son just got baptized last Sunday in Colorado. His whole family's come to church now. They all go there every Sunday. His son's a really great guy. I was, I was able to meet him. Owen's a really great guy. But he's made a difference because he's chosen to run to God. Our life, our life is, these are the outcomes of our life. But if we take a moment and we really look at our life, this is what matters. This right here, our roots, this is the most important thing you have. This is the outcome. This is what our life is produced by. But if we don't take time to protect this, we will lose it all. You look at your life and you say, hey, what do you mean? Let's be honest. Sometimes the problems we have, we let come in because we didn't protect who we were. We didn't take time and protect our roots, and therefore we allowed the problem to creep in. But God says, even though that's problem there, if you come back to me, I will help you get rid of it. It doesn't have to stay there. You might have let it in, but God will help you get it out. And that's the way it goes. You say, hey, my roots, protect them. They are the most valuable things you have in your life. You want your family to serve God? You want your marriage to be successful? You want work to work out for you? You want things to get better? When was the last time you put your guard around your roots? When was the last time you said, this is what I'm doing. I'm planting in and no matter what you say, you cannot change me. Look over at Proverbs 2, the third, let's go to the third chapter of Proverbs. It's, it's not up there, so just bear with me. But I want, I want you to read this, right? Because what does it say right here? Let me grab it. Third chapter, verse 5. Listen to this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You notice something he says, all your heart, right? You have to go 100% all the time. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Most of us are pretty good at messing up our own lives. We don't need help with that, but we need help with getting it right. We need help with getting it there. We are good with making our own problems, but we need God's help to get us out. And listen to what it says. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. God will make your path straight. You say, my, I come in here today and my burdens are tearing me apart. It's time you give those to God. It's time you say, God, here they are. From this moment on, when I leave here, my focus now turns to you. I am no longer going to let them decide how I feel when I wake up in the morning. I'm no longer going to let my problems decide if I'm going to be depressed. I'm not going to let them decide if I'm discouraged or if my marriage is going to work out. What am I going to do? I'm going to turn to God because that's where I'm supposed to be. I need my roots and I need to protect them. The most important thing you have is that. Go over to John really quick. It's the uh, 15th uh, chapter, I believe, or 11th. Let's see. It's a chapter in John. We will get there eventually. It's one of the ones. 15th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Listen to this verse. This is Jesus talking to us. This is God telling us where we need to be. This is kind of like my closing verse. It takes me a while to close, so we'll start now. It says, I am the true vine. And my father, the vine dresser. Every branch that is in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. This is where it gets really good. Listen to this part. It says, abide in me. That's what God's telling you. Live in me. Spend your time in me. And all that you do, do it in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it, abides in, unless it abides in the vine. The branch is no good once it's disconnected from the tree. You take a branch off the tree, no matter what you do, it's probably going to die. 
it doesn't do any good. You have to have the rest of it, right? So that's what it says. And then we, we keep reading. It says, And I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me tell you guys something really quick. I'll just be 100% honest with you. We got to pay attention. You will have problems. I cannot help you with your problems. I cannot give you directions to your problems unless you first believe in the Word of God. This is our playbook. This is what we've been given. If you come into me and you say, hey, I have these issues, I will say, you have to trust in God. If you want a different answer, go somewhere else because the answer is trust in God. If you have a problem, trust in God. Is your life going bad? Trust in God. You say it doesn't make sense. Have you tried it? Did you try everything else first and it didn't work? Have you tried God? Because that does work. The answers I have lie within the Word because this is what my life is founded on. This is what things are founded on. So let's keep reading. Verse 6, it says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown in the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. God says, if you trust in me, I will take care of you. I will look after you. How many of us have children in this room, right? I have, I have three daughters. There's not a thing I wouldn't do for any one of my kids. There's nothing I wouldn't do for any one of my kids. They could ask me anything in the world and I would do it. Because they are my children. And I love them no matter what. God's the same way. He says, abide in me. I will look after you. That's what I want to do. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to my disciples as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in me. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that, you, and that your joy may be full. God is telling you today, you walk through this door, you walk through this door today, and you say, there's something wrong. And that's, and I say, okay, we're all in the same boat. I've been discouraged. I've been at the place to where my whole family has fallen apart. I've been at the place to where work is absolutely miserable. I've been at the place to where life is so overwhelming, I can barely take it sometimes. And I stood back, and I let it defeat me for a while. I said, okay, you got the best of me. I guess it wasn't meant to be the way it was said. I guess maybe that was for some other family. Maybe that was for someone else. And God said, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I called you by name to do something for me. That's not just for Jake. That's for every person in this room. God called you by name. Did it go the way you had planned? Maybe not. But God says, run to me today. Run right now. You don't have time to wait. You don't have time to think till tomorrow I'll do it. Today is the day that you choose to serve God. Because when you choose to serve God with every single thing you have, you know what he does? He shows up right there. My verse my life first. The thing I've done everything for in my life. When my life was falling apart and it felt like there was no other place for me to be, I found myself in the middle of the road somewhere between Colorado and I want to say Idaho. I don't know. Or Oregon. Somewhere right there. I was going, so I was going to a job. And I opened my Bible for the first time in a long, long time. And I found a verse that I had never read before. And I fell in love with that verse. And I say it to myself all the time because it's my life to me. It says in the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, in the 13th verse, it says, If you seek me, you shall find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, I, talking about 
our God will be found by you. That verse has carried me my whole life. You sit here today and you say, man, I feel like Jake. It's just too much. I feel like I just can't do it. I'm telling you, God loves you too much to not fight for you. If he had to choose, he'd come down just for you because that's how great our God is. You say, it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't feel like it. But man, that's where he's at. He will come just for you if you ask him. So today, I say, take your eyes off of all your problems and run to our Father because he loves you so much. And he just wants to see you happy and healthy and whole. He wants to see you walk in your purpose. He wants to see you walk in his presence. He wants to see you do what he's called you to do. And he has a plan for every single one of you guys. Every single one of you guys. Run, 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 run to him. Run to him. Because in him is where our answers lie. In him is where our truth lies. In him is where we find healing. It's where we find encouragement. It's where we find the answers to suicide, to depression, to, to, to whatever it is you're dealing with, to our marriage, to our relationships. It's within Him. If you don't do it with Him, you don't have a fighting shot. That's what it takes. Run to God today. When you leave this room and you go home and you find your quiet time, Find your verse that you need to stand on. What are you dealing with? Depression? Type it into the computer. Type in Google. Bible verses on depression. Find the one that fits for you. Write it down. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. And every time you feel it, read it. Stand on it. Know the verse that's going to get you through your life. Know the verse that is going to get you over. Don't leave here defeated. Don't get off and walk your bike to the top of the hill. You know how to get there. You've trained for this. This is what God wants you to do. Go and become who God has called you to become and walk in victory because he's had already given you the answers. He's already given you the hope. and pray. I just, I just want to pray for everybody here, just in general. That we don't let our branches define us. Society says they do. Society says that if you have depression, I'm going to give you a pill and you've got to live with it your whole entire life. Society says if you're stuck on drugs, I'm going to give you something else and, and you're going to have to deal with it your whole entire life. Society says when you have a marriage problem, maybe it's best just to walk away because it's not good to fight in front of the kids. You have to change your focus 180 degrees to where it's only on your heavenly father and let him let him fight the battle for you because that's what it's designed to do dear heavenly father lord we thank you for your words that were spoken lord we thank you for your bible verse that says trust in me and not on anything i do lord we thank you for your words that are going to build us up. And Lord, we ask that every person in this room gets a fire built within them that they desire to do more of you. For you have a beautiful and a wonderful 
and an amazing plan for them. And Lord, we pray, and Lord, we stand on our word that these problems will not, defi will not define who we are anymore. Lord, we give them to you. Lord, we, we throw them away, and Lord, we give them to you. Lord, give us strength. Give us strength. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your son that gave us his love and died upon